in fact, the term Renaissance was not coined uh, a few hundred years after the High Renaissance, so it's already passed. But we now have the, uh, the opportunity to witness and share glory of this uh, Renaissance. So uh, in this uh, brief presentation, I will go over uh, what is genuine Chinese culture, why is it undergoing through a Renaissance, and then I'll spend some time to share with you the particular manifestation of that Renaissance, Shen Yun. And it's our form of appreciation. And uh, before I go on, I will ask, I would like to ask, what is your opinion or impression of uh, genuine Chinese culture? Anyone? Very cool. Very cool. That is, yeah. 90% of the time I get the answer. Okay. <laughs> it, it is. China, uh, the Chinese culture is the only uh, uninterrupted culture, mansion culture in the world. Now, minus um, 60, 60 or so years. Uh, I'll talk about it. And uh, ever since the earliest establishment of the Chinese culture, Chinese people embrace the concept one is of oneness of man and heaven. Now man, we are here. Heaven is there. How do we become one with the heaven? How do we go there? How do we find our true self? And the way to do it in Chinese language is called cultivation of practice. <coughs> cultivation refers to the improvement of one's mind and mental quality, and the practice refers to the refinement of one's body. So cultivation practice is really a generic term for um, high body transcendence. Throughout the um, Chinese history, there are numerous schools of, of teachings of cultivation um, passed on to China. Most of them um, uh, passed on um, privately. And uh, what we know are only those uh, uh, taught in public. For example, on the very left was uh, the Taoist uh, teaching or Lao Tzu's teaching. Nowadays, people regard it as a philosophical teaching. And so it was on the right side, Confucius teaching. People think it's a uh, philosophical teaching. No. At that time, those were the teachings for their respective students to go through guidance through the cultivation practice. And if you take away those two, there would be no Chinese culture. And those two plus uh, Buddhism, which is later imported to China, those three form the very basis of the uh, current Chinese culture. And so the genuine Chinese culture really is a culture of cultivation practice. Um, throughout the history, there have been many, many forms folks have talked about them, uh, cultivation legends. Uh, this side is uh, the famous ADAs, representing all walks of life, man, woman, old, young, Rich, poor, um, you know, you name it, they, they, and this particular picture um, draws about how those eight deities cross the ocean um, using each their own supernatural uh, capabilities. On the right side uh, is the painting of um, Qing Gao, who, uh, you know, through cultivation practice, um, obtained the status of deities and then fly up the air, riding a carpet. And so, such stories fueled the history of China. And uh, also, most historical figures who contributed to the shaping of Chinese culture were also practitioners of certain cultivation. Not the same school, but they are cultivation practitioners. Um, this picture is about the first um, emperor of China's history, Huang Di was searching for a uh, master to guide him to cultivate and practice, but this particular master said, your country, the birds will leave early before their migrate, immigration time comes, and uh, leaves will fall from the tree before autumn. It's a terrible country, and you haven't run it well, and you come to me to learn cultivate and practice? And so the emperor was greatly shamed, went back to, you know, uh, really uh, tidy up his action and run the country. And then three years later, he came to the same master and said, uh, you know, I've done my share and, and he 
started publishing in Af and then uh, in the end, um, he also blew up the air riding a dragon. And, uh, so that was the very first, the earliest uh, emperor of China. And there are many, many, many. Most of them are this kind of legends. And so from them, for generations, the Chinese intellectuals have this magazine for themselves. Um, hold it with oneself. Um, raise a family, pass, uh, run the country, I mean, govern the, govern the country, and pacify the world in that order. So cultivation practice is the basis of any um, serious undertaking. Therefore, the ethical value of the Chinese culture was derived from teaching and cultivation, and they played an essential role in maintaining it, establishing and maintaining morality uh, in China. And, uh, now, so, but that's not just China. Cultivation is universal. Um, the word cultivation, its Latin root means, uh, sorry, the word culture, um, the, the, the Latin root is cultivation. And also Roman uh, philo uh, philosophy wrote about uh, cultivation as uh, you know, improvement of one's soul. And so it is uh, not just Chinese culture. And as the basis of Chinese culture, cultivation practice have, been, have left its imprint on almost every aspect of the Chinese culture. Everything that I know is Chinese culture, or you have heard is Chinese culture, you can trace its root to uh, cultivation practice. <coughs> For example, Chinese medicine uh, were entirely established by uh, practitioners of cultivation. There are many, many um, legends of uh, cultivators. Um, for example, on the right um, is, a, is a doctor who um, will not charge patients. Uh, and if he cure a uh, treat a patient with uh, you know very severe uh, diseases, he will ask the patient to plant five African trees. If a lighter disease, he will ask him to plant one. And so after a few years, the area uh, contained over a hundred thousand Africa trees becomes Africa forest. And then they bear fruit. And he said, Every, everybody wants to get this fruit. Come and get it. All you need to do is bring a bowl of rice to, in exchange for the Africa. And then he will use and distribute uh, the rice to uh, help the poor. Very much in the spirit of the rotary. <laughs> and, uh, so um, nowadays, um, actually not nowadays, but for a long time, um, another name for medicine, for Chinese medicine or Chinese medical doctor is, is Africa Forest. Uh -huh. yeah. So when they say Africa Forest, they're, they're referring to Chinese doctors. Uh -huh. And uh, martial arts are also established by um, practitioner cultivators. And those two professions are example. And in fact, here we have a best Chinese doctor and the best uh, martial art expert in the world that I know. <laughs> oh, really? and, uh, so, Tai Chi is uh, you know, one form of martial art. Um, now, Chinese medicine, martial art, these are skills, these are expertise. But people who practice expert and, and skills learned that one's moral character determines how far he will achieve in his practice. Um, for example, martial art is about combat fighting. It is not those who always angry, easily get into a fight, have a short fuse that's necessarily better than fighting. Quite on the contrary, it is those who are more peaceful, more tolerant, that uh, develop or, or you know, achieve better skill. And uh, so, for generation, Chinese people learn that cultivate a moral, cultivation of moral character is a prerequisite of any serious study. In fact, the teacher or the master would go through a serious test to test his disciple. This is one um, legend I don't have time to go into, but this master was testing this disciple for his um, you know, character. And, uh, so it is through this 
examples, legends, and teachings that the Chinese <coughs> learned to respect uh, the divine beings who pass on these teachings to them, and uh, they learned to um, pay attention to ethics. They know, they believe in good begets good and evil begets evil. In fact, they not only pay attention to ethics, they pay attention to active ethics. Here is a uh, another story. Uh, in Dong Han, uh, which is a little over 2,000 years ago, there was a governor named Yang Zhen. He's also a very good educator. Um, at that time, um, being at the top, uh, as we are all also the top educators. Um, one night, one of his students came by with a bag of gold, not to bribe him, but to thank him, because the student felt that his teacher had done such a marvelous job of him, he wanted to express his gratitude. And there he got a, another a good teaching, moral lesson. The teacher said, no, I can never say this. It's just my job. The student says, please, this is just my token of appreciation. No one will know about it. There the teacher says, what do you mean that no one knows about it? The heaven knows about it, earth knows about it, you know about it, I know about it. So we cannot say no one knows about it. And that is how ancient Chinese people are, you know, keep themselves to be honest with them themselves. Even they're alone, they know they're not alone. Their eyes watching, they themselves are watching. And that is the ancient Chinese study. Unfortunately, this rich tradition was interrupted in 1949 when the Chinese Communist Party came to power. The ideology of CCP is materialistic and atheist. And to make room for that ideology, it systematically eradicated Chinese culture and traditional value and uh, demonizes superstition. Uh, in the very first two years after it came to power, CCP killed two million people for their spiritual practice, and they're, they're for us, uh, you know, in the next 30 years, no one dared to mention cultivation practice. And then during the Cultural Revolution, uh, which started um, in 1966, last year, 1976, the party then went on to massive, almost complete destruction of cultural relevance. And uh, with 5,000 years to history, imagine how many cultural objects exist in China. In a small town there would be over a dozen small temples in, in the city of Beijing there were 500 of them. They were mostly destroyed. Um, here's a, on the left is the pulling down of the monument in Confucius mentioned. If you know how essential Confucius to the Chinese culture, pulling down that monument is the stand. As Going down the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. to this nation. And then on the right side is the, the humiliation and destruction of the statue. Burning of a plaque that generations and generations of Chinese mean for Confucius, which is exemplary of ages, and that is burned. 